Now we are ready to turn our attention to Real Salt Lake, and we are delighted to welcome in Pablo Mastroeni, head coach. Hello, Pablo. How are you doing? Hi, team. Doing well. Thank you. Um, okay, so you're in preseason on the coast of Portugal, which doesn't sound terrible at all. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of clubs in in Florida, in Arizona. We just talked to Troy Lassane there in Saudi Arabia. How how does this happen where you guys get to go to the coast of Portugal to do preseason? Well, I think we're fortunate to have an ownership group that uh, has a few teams abroad. And uh, one of their clubs, Bromby um, from Denmark, usually comes to this spot here in Portugal for their uh, January camp. And so uh, somehow the connections were made that we were going to come up and participate in the, what it's called the Atlantic Cup. Um, and, and play in some some very good matches, but also um, get to spend some time in a beautiful place in, in Lagos, uh, Portugal, and enjoy uh, the beautiful scenery and allow us to kind of build that team camaraderie, you know, being away from home. All right, so let's chat about uh, the action on the field in preseason, because I'm sure we could spend the whole rest of the show talking about the food in Portugal, but let's... Let's let's not let's talk about some soccer here. Um, a fifth place finish in the West last year. Um, you guys were a team that had incredible moments. It would you would go on these these runs of wins and then maybe fall off form a little bit. There was a late summer slump. So when you think about this season in 2024, what is going to be the key for you guys to kind of remain consistent with those results and not have that those dips? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. You know, I think in the early part of the season, we did a good job of getting results, uh, mixing teams and rotating quite a few players uh, in, a, in a very dense uh, schedule. Um, and and I think the tipping point for us, and and sometimes it happens in sports, sometimes it doesn't, but really losing Pablo Ruiz uh, in the middle of the field. You know, he was our deep line playmaker. Uh, he was our guy that helped us progress the ball at the field, but he last year, for me, was a breakthrough season for him where he actually put some good numbers on the board uh, in goals and assists. And and when we lost him, I felt like we had to rebalance our group and, and, and kind of start again. And so I think important for us is to stay healthy this year. We have a great group of guys um, that we're counting on who had very good seasons last year, Pablo being one of them, but Luna, uh, Diego Luna, uh, Andres Gomez, and, and Chicho. And, and we also lost Chicho at the end of the year as well. So um, if we can keep our guys healthy, I feel like we'll be in a great spot to, you know, to compete for the West. Pablo, how, how do you continue to push the envelope in the West? Because I felt like your club in particular was very underrated, underappreciated, and then came on strong. And then everyone's like, oh, we got to take on ourselves for real. You lose Jefferson Savarino, seven goals, six assists. And, you know, he was always capable of pulling out those big time moments. How do you replace him and continue to move up the Western Conference? Great question. I, you know, I think the, the way we have to do this year is by committee and by team. Um, and, you know, we're changing things up tactically. We want to be a team that really imposes ourselves on the game, uh, you know, very much like every other team in the MLS. But we've, I think tactically you're going to see a different team where we're taking a bit of, you know, positional play, but a adding some relational play and, you know, and the relationship between the players space, the ball um, and, and, and having a, a, a nice flow uh, in possession. And, and I think that really caters to the, the, the type of players that we have guys like Luna, Pablo Ruiz, Chicho, Andres Gomez, uh, you know, Ojeda. And so guys that, that, that play from a place of intuition um, and, and feel like if we can get our structure, right. The relational football, I think, will kind of be be advantageous for us to be able to pin teams back a little bit further, create more chances on goal, um, and and so we're doing it more from a a team system based than we are individual players. And obviously, you need individuals to score goals, and and I feel like we have a good complement of those. Um, and so we're we're embarking on this journey to have uh, a different type of identity. Um, that hopefully we can make a lot, lot of gains through our system, through our camaraderie, and through our team spirit. Ooh, RSL's evolving. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Pablo, uh, Charlie mentioned some of the, the changes with Saverino. You got Rubin that's gone uh, um, uh, to Queretaro. Obviously, Damir Krylak, who's been a, a really important piece of that puzzle. You've had changes on the field, but you've also had changes in your staff here. So it's a, a bit of a, a transition year, if you will. 
how how hard, how easy, um, how uncomfortable maybe in, in a lot of ways has that been uh, in in your learning process really as a young manager? Yeah, you know, what's interesting, Tony, is obviously, um, you know, when, when the staff left, it was a hard moment for me. Um, and, you know, there's there's probably about a week of, of grieving. Um, and then I came to the realization that we as coaches, we always have great bits of advice for our players, right? And 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 trying to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And and that's when you know you're in a great headspace. Um, and so I really listened to myself speaking to the players going through this time. And once I got my mindset shift to uh opportunity and change, and you start to embrace it, then it becomes like a blank canvas. And and so then it becomes, well, if we, we're not gonna have the same staff and we don't have the same team, can we change the way we, we, we think about the game. Can we change the way we approach the game? Um, and so it's been three weeks now in, in camp um, and and the players have been fantastic in embracing the change. Uh, the coaching staff has been wonderful to work with. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, what we're capable of doing and just the process as well. The process has been, you know, it's not all, you know, happy days. There's, there's some tough days for sure, but it's through those tough days when you stick together as a group, players, coaches, staff, club, I feel like we can make some big gains. So I, I'm really excited about 2024. Um, and, and unfortunately, the things that have happened in the past, we can't affect. But it's really about where we're going to place our energies moving forward. And speaking of placing your energy, a lot of that energy for the first match of the season is going to come against Inter-Miami. We obviously know your Argentine roots, Pablo. How special is it going to be? to face off against Messi and company, um, especially if I'm not mistaken, you guys haven't played them yet. Um, and then the Messi train continues now against RSL. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be, you know, a special moment in particular for the players. You know, I think to be on the field with, for me, the greatest player of all time is a special moment for everyone. And, and, and what I want to be sure of is that that moment, um, isn't big enough to be able to play the way we want to play and, and, and overrides the, the ability to think the game and, and to compete the right mm -hmm. way. Uh, and, and I think the best sign of respect to any great opponent is, is to play hundred percent and play the way you normally play. And, and at the end of the game, you know, it's, it, it'll be an a great moment for everyone to remember. Um, but, but I think it's a, it's a big stage um, and, and one that we have to be willing to embrace the right way in order to put our, you know, our best foot forward. Uh, Pablo, I want to ask about the evolution of a, a player that you mentioned uh, <clears throat> a couple times in Diego Luna. Uh, we've had him on the, the show uh, a few times, and he's a guy who kind of emerged last season, wasn't getting a ton of minutes to start, and then became uh, a pretty in integral part of your guys' success in, late in the season. How, how have you seen his, his game evolve from, from last season to where he is now, and how important is he to the success of RSL? Yeah, uh, you know, his evolution um, has been tremendous. And, and and I think a lot of times with younger players is the things, you know, that that come so easy to you when you're with the U20s or, you know, when he was playing in the USL, um, you come up to this level and the, the, the defenders are quicker, they're smarter, um, they're more experienced. And, and, and so what brought you here isn't going to necessarily propel you to the next echelon of your game. And one of the areas that, that that I focused in on with Diego was was his working both sides of the ball. You know, we're, we're a team that 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 has to be a team and work both sides. And it took a little bit of, you know, uh, a little bit of talking to. Uh, you know, we had we had a lot of good conversations. Um, but I think when Diego bought into the defensive side of the ball, he found himself in great positions to counter. He found himself a lot freer to receive balls in the pocket. Um, he found himself more connected to the game as the game was moving um and, and and in doing so you know he he was he was one of our most important players at the end of last season and so when you think about the trajectory that he's been on it's been tremendous and and now it's really part two of that which is now that you you have a lot of people talking about you and you're an important player for our team now it's maintaining consistency and and making sure that you have the that drive every day in training to really it's not about you anymore, right? You reach this level. It's really about how do you make your teammates better and how do you how do you improve the environment that we're working in every day? Um, and so he's a young player with a lot of responsibility uh, to carry. But if there's one guy that can do it, it's Diego Luna.
Well, Pablo, the RSL Academy has, has really developed some gems. So who else should we be looking out for? I know Alex Ka mm -hmm. Axel Kai has been one that signed a professional contract when he was 14. Is, is, is there a, another a kid that you are expecting to contribute in major ways this season? You know, we've had quite a few uh, younger players in camp here with us in Portugal. And, and, and I think, you know, guys like Gavin Beaver, for example, who, who you know, made his debut last year, he'll continue to, to be a, a player to look out for. Uh, Xavier Gozo, uh, I think he's 16 years old, um, has, has worked his way through the academy and has been really good in this preseason. And then uh, another young player that happened to come to us uh, from happenstance, we had an injury and we had to bring up another player to fulfill the roster. Um, Aiden Herzanami, um, a young, left-footed, talented winger. And he's been the most impressive to me only because I haven't seen him. But the way he's handled himself, you know, he's a left-footed player that plays on the right side, inverted. And his calm on the ball, his ability to see passes, his ability to score goals and, and set his teammates up has been wonderful. So that's a name I'd definitely uh, be looking out for. And there's no doubt in my mind that he can contribute sooner than later. I think Pablo said 16 years old. That seems so far away from uh, where we are right now, right? Uh, Pablo, uh, one last one here. Over the uh, years, you've given us uh, a few looks, if you will, right? A few different types of, well, we all have our hair. We all, the the yes. uh, crew this morning was wondering Ooh, if, this, uh, if there's any chance at all that this might come back at some point. Tony, you know, uh, I, I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Uh, but my wife and my daughter hated it. And so, <laughs> like, I can only pull that stuff off for so long before it, you know, it starts to ruin the personal life. But it was a, it was, it was a great moment to, to kind of experience. I didn't know I can grow such a great mustache, and that's, that's probably the hair. Yeah, that's that's, that's different level, yeah. Pablo. That is Holy different. <laughs> it's, actually, level. Like, it's almost like you're a magician, too. Like, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, that was not my teammate when I saw this was my oh, teammate here. But, I missed uh, the long floor wow. right yeah, there. Yeah, wow. Yep. That what long flow is uh, classic. Ernie wow. Stewart there. Carlos oh, Yamosa, Greg, Greg, Greg Burrow. Those, those are some legends. Wow. Keller, oh I, my goodness. I am sitting amongst legends there for sure. I, I shouldn't be in that picture. Oh, uh, those guys, the guy, that. guys near me are legends. Absolutely uh, incredible. Look at that flow. Pablo, that's the Argentine in you that's giving you that, that, that long <laughs> flow. That was classic. Thanks, so Pablo. Good. So good. Pablo, thank you so much for, for taking the time right, to team. join us. Enjoy Great that Portuguese wine. Will do. Will do. <laughs>